from zero this time, and including that lambda being zero in that case. So one, T1, H1. So superposition principle implies that series uh, solution, yeah, if the U, the series converges, etc. So then we have, yeah, we were summing the combinations of U sub Ns. And we get a solution of this form. So that's a more general form, general form. But of course, you can put them together. So you see, it's better we use a because this should be depending on the index, right? Let's call it a zero b zero. A zero b zero. This is a, some coefficient depending for this one, a and b n. That's the corresponding to lambda n. That's, that's yeah. A, H, that's a C. C. No, that's a T. Like right, right up. This is a T. Yeah, correct. Thank you. That's a T. Okay, so we have this, right? This is for each one, so we, we label this. So now let's, um, but certainly for some coefficient purpose, when you try to come up with a uniform uh, formula, so you can put a half, for example, or that. Um, okay, but now we can put all of them into this form. So what is the first term? When you do a phi zero, H zero. H zero is that. Uh, phi zero is a one, right? When phi zero, when N is zero. That's constant zero is one. Yeah, so that's a one times this form. I think on the book you must see a half, half of this because they eventually they want to arrive at a, a formula because of the inner product, so they can give. But that doesn't cause them any problems, just the formula for convenience, yeah. Convenience of the formula. So, so okay, let's suppose you use H0 times the T0, what is the first product? Just that, right? This times the one, yeah, just that itself. Okay, the next, uh, H1 times the, uh, well, remaining will be very general, so all this one, right? This times that. So remaining terms will be from the one to the infinity, so all the phi sub n will be cosine. That's the piece of n. H sub n is uh, that. Lambda square root of lambda is this. C is a C. That's a T. And then plus sin L of n times C times T.
but a slightly different uh, idiomatic problem. Yeah, and then we go through the same process, and then we got a solution of this form, series form. How do you determine the coefficients? Those many coefficients to be determined, a set of uh, A coefficients, a set of B coefficients, right? Those coefficients can be determined using the initial conditions. Yeah, those are to be used to further determine the coefficient. Then we're done after we uh, solve. But uh, when we look for the coefficients using the initial data, we made use of the orthogonality, right, of the eigenfunctions. That's uh, convenient to, to determine the coefficients. Okay, so that, that uh, is a different problem, also a review of the technique for the 5.3, separation of variables. But next, we can look at one non-homogeneous problem. Okay, separation of variables. Because right now we're looking at homogeneous equation, homogeneous boundary conditions. So let's look at a non-homogeneous equation with the right side being non-zero function. non-homogeneous equation, non-homogeneous equation, can we possibly use separation of variables method for this non-homogeneous equation? We just uh, went over, right, the, this homogeneous case with the given f and g, how to derive, find the solution um, is a nice function uh, if it ha has the expanded Fourier series uh, 